Hey guys, James here. I'm excited to take a few minutes out of my day to dig in and show you how to create some awesome interactive YouTube videos. Let's have a look. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is upload a video. So anytime you're uploading a video, you actually have the option for making it a video that's public, unlisted, or private. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it unlisted, and then I'm gonna go to my hard drive, find the video that I want to use, I'm select it, and it will start uploading. So even while it starts uploading, I can then go in and adjust the name of the video in the description. I can add any tag. So for here, I wanna call it making an interactive video. And the video is now uploaded. I can change the settings from private to public to unlisted. I can include it in a playlist, one of the different playlists that I have, depending on how I want to use it. Okay, so I'm gonna finish here. I'm gonna ignore the settings around monetization, advanced settings, education. I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And now that the video is uploaded, I'm gonna be able to add the interactivity or the annotations. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up our video into the YouTube player. So I've gone and I've clicked and I've opened the video just as you would if you were going to watch it. Now, if you're logged in, you'll see that you'll have some additional options here at the bottom. I click the pencil, which means edit at this point, and I open up the editing options. So now that you have all of these different options, very similar to what you had when you were uploading it originally. Additionally, you can change the thumbnail or the image that appears when people search for your video on YouTube, the basic information, description, tags, all the same. However, you now have some additional settings here at the top. So we're gonna ignore enhancements. Enhancements, think of them as Instagram. You can change the look and feel in the video, some sounds. Audio, you can add additional audio tracks. YouTube has a whole library of copyright-free tracks that you can add. But for the sake of this, we're gonna be looking at the annotations. So annotations is where all the interactivity resides. So let's go ahead and leave this page and open up annotations. So the first thing you're gonna see here is a timeline has been added to the bottom. So this is the canvas that you'll be using to determine when some sort of interactivity happens during the video. So if we go over here to the right, the first thing you're gonna do is add an annotation or add some interactivity. And you have five options. You can add a speech bubble. A speech bubble might be something that you add, let's say you had a typo or you want to call your users or your viewers attention to something a note very similar a title you forgot to title the video or you wanted to add a new intro to a section of it like you know welcome to yosemite you would add the title the spotlight is the one that i use most for adding those little boxes for people to click on so let me click spotlight and if you see it's kind of hard to see on the white background i now have a box that has appeared on the video so the background video that you see is just a snapshot or a picture that I've taken from a presentation and I've recorded my screen and turned it into a video. Those aren't real buttons yet. They're just simply pictures with boxes. So I need to drag this spotlight box over the area where I want to turn into a button. Okay, so I've dropped the area there. And if you look down here at the bottom in the timeline area, you can see when in the video you want the box to appear. So for the sake of this, I actually want the box to be there the entire time. So there's no other parts of the video. However, if the video is going to switch halfway to a different screen, I would make it only 10 seconds long or 15 seconds long, depending on when that transition in the video happened. So now that we have the first box, you need to tell you to what to do when your viewer clicks it. So if you look back over here on the right, you have the additional options for what happens in that spotlight. You can adjust the fonts if you'd actually written something in there. The color, for the sake of this, I'm gonna leave it transparent so that you can see the box I've drawn underneath. And I'm gonna say, hey, when you click on this button, I want you to link to another video. 
So I'm going to select the option that says video. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in the link to a YouTube video that I want you to be able to watch if you click on that. So I have the link to a video that I want to use and I go over here and click on the box and I simply paste the link. And so that'll tell YouTube that when somebody clicks on the box at any point during the video, send them over to this other video. Now I can do this process additional times, like having more than one box within a single video. So I'm gonna click add annotation again, the spotlight button again, and a new box will appear. Again, I drag it to where I want that box to appear, and then I go down and I adjust it for when I want that box to appear. I click the link button, and I want this to link back to my YouTube channel, so I'm going to type in the name of it, youtube.com slash jamests, and now whenever somebody clicks on it, it'll go to my YouTube channel. Again, for the playlist, I click Spotlight, take this third box, drag it over the box, of the link to a playlist that I've already created. Once it's in the right place, I click link, and I go ahead and drop in the link to the playlist that I want to use. And then finally, I adjust the settings for when that box appears, and I'm ready to add my final spotlight, which is a box over the subscription button, telling the viewers, hey, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can click on the button that says subscribe. So I'm gonna add a link and I'm gonna select the option that says subscribe. Because YouTube knows that this is my channel and it's my video that I'm creating, all I do is drop in the link there that says subscribe and it will take that viewer and automatically subscribe them to my channel. I look down and double check my timelines. It looks like all four boxes will be viewable, viewable the entire length of the video and I'm ready to save it and publish it. And I now have a fully interactive video that I can post on my classroom website or blog, you know, creating an additional level of interactivity for my students and viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Send me any tips that you might have or how you use interactive videos in your classroom. And I look forward to hearing from you next time.